Have you ever wondered why it's so easy to make unplanned purchases when you're just browsing in a store or online? You see, impulse buying is a fascinating phenomenon that has become a cornerstone of our consumer culture. Retailers and marketers are savvy operators employing psychological tactics to get us to buy more and buy now. They tap into our desires, our fears and even our sense of identity to encourage us to part with our hard-earned cash. One key driver is the concept of instant gratification. We live in a world of now where we can have almost anything we want at the click of a button. This immediacy fuels our impulse to purchase, offering a quick fix to our desires. It's a tantalizing proposition, isn't it? So impulse buying isn't just about a lack of self-control, it's a carefully orchestrated strategy by businesses. To curb impulse buying, we first need to understand the psychology behind our spending habits. Retail therapy, a term we've all heard before. It's not just a buzzword, but a real psychological phenomenon. When we're feeling low, buying something new can give us a mood boost. This is because shopping stimulates the release of dopamine in our brains, a neurotransmitter that's responsible for feelings of pleasure and satisfaction. So when you buy that new pair of shoes or that fancy gadget, you're not just acquiring a new possession, you're also giving yourself a temporary dopamine rush. But it's not just our emotions that drive our spending habits. Social influences play a significant role too. We are social creatures after all, we want to fit in, to be seen, to be acknowledged. Our buying decisions are often influenced by what others are buying, what's trending, what's deemed cool. This is the role of status seeking in our spending habits. We buy not just for ourselves, but also for the image we project to others. However, there's another psychological concept at play here. Loss aversion. It's the idea that losing something hurts more than the joy of gaining something of equal value. Retailers are well aware of this. That's why sales are so effective. When we see a limited time offer, we feel the urgency to buy, fearing the loss of a good deal. This sense of loss aversion can lead us to overspend, buying items we might not need simply because we don't want to miss out. But here's the thing. Understanding these psychological triggers is the first step towards gaining control over our spending habits. When we recognize that our desire to buy is driven by a dopamine rush, social influences or loss aversion, we can pause, reflect and decide whether the purchase is truly necessary or just an impulse. Understanding these psychological triggers can help us make more conscious spending decisions. Now that we understand the psychology behind our spending habits, how can we resist the temptation of impulse buying? Resisting this temptation may seem a Herculean task, but with a few practical strategies, we can indeed rein in our propensity for impulse purchases. Firstly, create a budget and stick to it. This may sound elementary, but it's surprising how many of us overlook this simple yet effective tool. By allocating specific amounts for different categories of spending, we create a financial framework that helps curb unnecessary expenses. Secondly, avoid shopping when you're emotional. Retail therapy is a real phenomenon, but it often leads to regrettable spending. Whether you're elated, depressed or bored, it's best to steer clear of shopping as an emotional outlet. Next, practice mindful spending. This means being fully aware of where every penny goes. It's about questioning each purchase. Do I really need this? Is it worth the price? Could I find it cheaper elsewhere? By making mindful spending a habit, we can significantly cut down on impulse buying. Another strategy is to use cash instead of cards. Swiping a card is easy and often doesn't feel like real spending, but when we have to part with physical cash, we feel the impact of the transaction more deeply, making us think twice before making a purchase, then set financial goals. Whether it's saving for a house, a dream vacation, or a comfortable retirement, having concrete financial goals can serve as a powerful deterrent against impulse buying. Finally, understand the difference between wants and needs. This can be a grey area, but it's crucial to distinguish between the two. Needs are essentials, things we can't do without. Wants, on the other hand, are nice to have, but not necessary. By focusing on needs over wants, we can significantly curb our impulse buying. With awareness and a few strategic changes, we can take control of our spending habits and make decisions that support our long-term financial health.